Hi, this is Illuminati Productions. Today we're gonna look at how the electron was born. Have you ever wondered what is the fundamental building block of life? What is it that we're all really made up of? The answer is quite simple and familiar. It is the atom. In Greek it comes from atomio which means indivisible. It was this man John Dalton who said Atoms are the indivisible components of matter. Each element has its own different type of atom. Well, thank you sir. But hey, wait a minute. Are atoms really indivisible? <coughs> They're not. Atoms comprise of electrons, protons and neutrons. Electrons being the negatively charged species. But how did they discover the electron when they couldn't even really see it? To find out, let's go back in history when they just discovered electricity. That right there is the battery consisting of the negative and the positive terminals and it was believed that the electricity was caused to flow from the positive to the negative side. So when they attached a light bulb, due to the potential difference from the positive to the negative side, it began to glow. Quite obvious, isn't it? So they got bored of it. This time, they attached metal plates to the negative and the positive terminals and named them cathode and anode. They put it in a low pressure gas tube and applied high voltage to it. They expected the bulb to glow, but did it really glow? Well, it did surprisingly glow! But how was that possible? The only explanation was that there must be some rays coming from the cathode to the anode completing the circuit. They named these mysterious rays as cathode rays and they redid the experiment this time they made a hole in the anode and put a screen behind it this was a special screen that when struck by those mysterious cathode rays produced a glowing spot so this time when the cathode rays passed through the hole and hit it they hit it at a point B which began to glow next they attached two plates of positive and negative terminals in the direction perpendicular to the velocity of the cathode rays the cathode rays got bent towards the positive place showing that their own nature was negative as opposites attract. Finally, they added a magnetic field. This direction was perpendicular to both the velocity of the cathode rays and the previous electric field. Now magnetic field also influences a moving charged particle and this time it caused the cathode rays to deflect downwards and hit the screen at a point C. If you didn't really get the electromagnetic part, don't worry about it, we'll cover it later on. And oh, by the way, this is the exact same principle behind the working of your CRT televisions. The screen in the previous experiment is the screen of your television and electrons strike it to create the picture you see. But hey, coming back to the experiment, the deviation of the cathode rays was caused due to the charge and the mass of the particles in the cathode rays and thirdly the strength of the electric and magnetic field these parameters were carefully balanced to obtain the charge to mass ratio these experiments were done in 1897 by this little guy here called JJ Thompson he was the one to propose the name electrons hey there what's up and he found out with his calculations the charge to mass ratio to be 1.758820 into 10 to the power 11 coulomb per kg and that's how the electron was born yay so that's it for this time guys make sure to click the subscribe button because there's some great stuff coming along this was just a start and you can comment whatever you'd like me to teach from your high school math or science I'll do those too if possible so See you next week guys, have a good time.